Hi guys, welcome back. So I'm going to do a video dedicated to Wales because I actually think they're in big trouble. I'm going to try and explain why. I'd love to know your thoughts. Now obviously they've lost three games in the Six Nations and any team can do that, but I think it's a bit deeper than that. And this is especially troubling and a shame because Wales have been possibly the most successful team in the Six Nations ever by some measures. I did a whole video on working out who was the best Six Nations team ever. Do have a look if you're interested. Now, obviously, this Six Nations is already a disaster. They've got zero tournament points, not even a bonus point, a try bonus point, minus 62 points difference. And surely the wooden spoon match is up next. Unfortunately, it's in Rome. You know, Italy have looked pretty good in attack, but sometimes their defence has dropped off, which could be a saving grace. But the Welsh attack has been the bluntest of the tournament. There are three tries. One was from Amal. One was a gift interception for Reece Samet. So it's not looking good statistically for the Welsh attack. And just by watching it as well, the deception isn't there. You know, they're not on the same page. They've obviously rung a lot of changes as well. And that links on to point two. Warren Gatland is miles off knowing his best team. And many players that he would have hoped would have performed haven't. And he rung all the changes for England or a lot of changes and didn't really learn anything definitive, I don't think. Let me know if you think someone particularly stood out from that game. And he's stuck between a rock and a hard place. He's got a lot of players who have been very good for Wales in the twilight of their careers and a number of young players, probably a couple of years off their peak, that he's had to push through. Now, it's hard to know when older players, uh, when their performances will drop off. I mean, they will gradually drop off athletically, but sometimes they drop off a cliff. But it seems to be all happening at once a bit. And I put up a number of players here to talk about. It's not all the 30-somethings, but it is a bit of a problem because some of these older players aren't quite performing. Ken Owens, still plugging away. But he's just not quite the athlete that other teams have. And he's 36 years old. Baldwin, Roberts, I don't think they're the answer. Maybe all the hope is on uh, Dewey Lake coming back. He might be the hooker for the future, but you know he's not available at the moment. So Ken Owen still plugging away at 36. Then at 37, another absolute legend and warrior, Alan Wynne-Jones. But watching him get smashed behind the game line a lot versus England was quite hard to take. You know, yes, he's 37. He's still trying hard. It's amazing what he can do for 37. But he's not up to the same level of other second rows like uh, James Ryan of Ireland, for example. Daffy Jenkins could well be his long-term replacement, but that's a 20-year uh, gap in age really there which is pretty telling and a long time to wait for a replacement and with the likes of Jake Ball and Rowlands moving abroad more evidence that maybe they need to scrap this 25 cap rule that it is now completely so there's a problem there into the back row we've got Justin Tipperick at 33 years old and he was once one of the world's finest athletes but clearly the years have caught up with him, injuries, etc. And he's still a you know, good player. He knows what to do. He can be in the right place at the right time. But he's a shadow of his former self. To Lupe Falatau, you know, his performances haven't dropped off a cliff. But he's definitely lost a yard of pace. And he's not one of those leading number eights in the world at the moment. You know, as he has been for the part of a decade, really. Then we've got Dan Bigger. Whether his age has got something to do with it, at 33, I don't know, but he's had two absolute stinkers under Gatland, and he was unceremoniously dumped by Gatland for that England game, so let's see if his career can bounce back. Now, George North, age 30, well, he slowed down a fair bit from his prime winger days, but then he's cleverly moved into the centres, and he's been doing okay, but unfortunately in the first two rounds, hasn't performed like bigger, and Gatland completely binned him again for that England game, trusting two complete rookies instead of having a spot for him, so that's pretty painful. Then we've got the two veteran fullbacks, Liam Williams, who... 34 years old, but I actually thought he's been performing fairly well. So I was surprised when he was dropped as well. And they put Lee Halfpenny in, who can still catch and kick with the best of them. But he doesn't have that running attack edge anymore. So that's just a few players in their 30s, not exhaustive, who just are falling off their performance a little bit. Does he stick with them? Because the World Cup's not long around the corner. He's had to rush through some players like uh, Schwinzer, Hawkins, Grady, and they're going to need a bit of time to bed in and perform. Schwinzer hasn't really performed as well as he should, but you know the big guys around him should be stepping up instead, really. So does he stick with those older players? Does he ditch more of them? 
I don't know, but what I do know is Wayne Pivak looks very happy on TV, kind of saying, I told you so, it wasn't all my fault. Now on to point three, the way that Wales attack is very basic, but I think Gatlin wants to master the other areas first, the defence, the set piece, the kicking game, but unfortunately none of that's worked out either. Uh, the defence has leaked a lot of tries, the lineouts look ropey, the kicking games look well off, so having that basic attack on top of it has really not worked. So you can't really say that there's a positive in any particular area of the game. And if those three points weren't bad enough, then you've got the utter mess that the regional system is in, the negative atmosphere, the fact that you know, no matter how professional players are, it's going to affect them in this championship. They're going to get pay cuts. They're going to lose players. Sure, they've got this 25 cap rule, but you might still get younger, talented players just leaving anyway because there's better pay elsewhere. How is that going to affect the Welsh team? Will they be able to get it into their contracts with the players leaving? They can come back and train and play, especially outside of test windows, which Wales and other teams do because they need to earn more money. So just on top of it, that's another problem. So to summarise, unfortunately, this is probably the lowest the Welsh team has been since the beginning of the first Gatland era. And their round four game against Italy is huge. They need something to grab hold of, whether it's set piece, whether it's defence, whether it's attack, whether it's just to win. They need something. Otherwise, it's just sink or swim time. Let me know how you think that game's going to go. Let me know what you think, what else is wrong with the Welsh game at the moment, or if there's more positives that are missing. Is it players' fault? Is it the coaches' fault? Is it the WRU's fault? I'd love to know all your thoughts, all the comments below, and I'll catch you next time.